I just talked to Andrea Margabici. We talked about your mother's 70th birthday party. You know, do you know who Steve Martin is? Say hi. We'll be we have you here. I'm and Sean McNabb. <laughs> he got away. It's too late. Yeah, you got away. You, yeah, I believe it. Moving to Utah. That was great. Having that talk, you know, they keep in touch now. You just spoke to Ben yesterday. I know. You should be so proud. He's doing two, playing two roles in a film right now. He actually has to play two alter egos, you know. So he's like happier than a pig and shit. And, uh, and Harry, he's in Harry's school. Gorgeous. He's incredible. He's tall. He got the tall gene. I, no, I keep in touch with Jeremy. Facebook. I, we're Facebook friends. And Emily is now Gorgeous. I have to say, okay, I, again, I'm sounding boring here. I know everybody on the red carpet tonight. But Richard and I share a special bond because our sons were best friends when they were two oh and a half. Wow. And now they're grown boys. Uh, I'm here for Life After Kids on TV. Well, can I say one thing? Because of you, my favorite song I sing at a place called The Alley in Oakland is Show Me the Way to Go Home. That I heard you sing in Jaws. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, the Alley, it's on 3325 Grand Avenue. Rod Dibble's been at the piano for, since 1963. And I walked, always wanted to see it. He knows it by heart. And now, and now it's my song. She mentioned Andrea Marcovici. I watched her decide to become a singer and then become a singer and then become a great singer. Right. And it was an amazing thing. Amazing. Yeah, and that night we got to have a private concert for your mother, beautiful mother, Jerry. And, um, and what happened that night? The guy fell down. Oh, my God, that's Andrea right. Andrea held it together. I know. Come here a minute. I want to... So, so not only is he an amazing actor, you know, he's won this award, nominated several times, adorable, I still love you like ever. I'm sorry. No, I did. From that time you walked in the kitchen. Come on, I've had a crush on you forever. And I can say it because I'm old now. Okay? And he won't want to be with me anyway. It doesn't matter. I'll edit that out. You know what you have? You have eyes that say, I know something you want to know. That's true. He's right. He's hey, right. listen, I paid for those eyes today. Look at, look at that. Look at those lashes. All right. More importantly, the actor, you have been really, really, and I've kept up with you over the years, really involved with history, bringing politics, you know, and, and the knowledge of politics and public policy to the masses. And, and you even taught in England for a while. So... Actually, I was a student research kind of teacher, kind of student. Okay. Well, we're all kind of teachers, kind of students, aren't we? At this age of the game. God, you're so Anyway, sorry, I'm shamelessly flirting. I know you're married. Sorry, <laughs> Mrs. Dreyfus. Really, we just go back. We're oh, okay. you, my nipples just look really hard. Hey, Mrs. Dreyfus, I'm done. what is it about Jaws? Because I watched Jaws and Jurassic Park back to back, and just to see how te technology had impacted movie making. What is it about Jaws that endures? Because it doesn't have technology. It was all improvised because the shark didn't work, and Stephen had to make it up in his head as he went along. And that's why it endures, because it's so imaginative, and it's so great. And he was able to bring all the departments working together. And if you watch it for five minutes, you're hooked. Yes. If you take the music out, those same five minutes will just fall out. And I remember you did a uh, special on, for John Williams, a several years, and that really got me. Because it was a scene where you all were trying to chase it right, and he took the music out. And I said, that's that was a perfect example of what we're talking about right Stephen now. Stephen once said to me, you want to hear the music? I said, they haven't written it yet. He said, I know. You want to hear it? <laughs> and he brought me into his office and he played me the music. It hadn't been written yet. Hmm. So wait a second. One more thing. So what's going on in this room? What, 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 what can we do? I mean, education is not being funded. I, I'm going to get your political side here. I mean, where are we going? We can't fund our programs. We can't fund education. Our kids are stupider than ever. We can pay for all this education, but now they don't read. Because you're a scholar. No. First of all, you have to understand that we're addicted to instantaneous gratification. And 
turning the culture around will take 20 years. So people already want to say no. But if you adhere to reason and logic and clarity of thought and critical analysis, and if you use dissent, debate, civility, and opposing views, you'd raise all boats and you'd save America. But what you got to do is realize that this thing here is part of the distraction industry to keep you from thinking about what you should be thinking about. And you have to be aware of it. More money, time, and effort is given to distracting us than anything else. So, the question I really wanted to ask you, how was it playing Dick Cheney in the movie? Everyone likes to play the bag. It's, it's no different than playing any other kind of bag. People love playing bag. And that's... And the real secret is that people don't like to hear is that everyone has Dick Cheney inside. <laughs> so, what do you have going on now, uh, professionally acting-wise? I'm doing some segments of parenthood, but I'm, I'm really involved in this initiative to get civics back. Tell me the name of your organization. It's called the Dreyfus Initiative.org. And we had our first national... Dot org, right? In, okay. Had our first internet conversation with the, the, probably the most respectable panel in 40 years. And we're going to have another, and then we'll have another. And there was a guy named Cato the Elder from Rome, and at the end of every speech he would say, Carthage must be destroyed, and he's going to sit down. And for 15 years, they thought he was nuts. Five years later, they destroyed Carthage. So this may take 20 years, but Carthage must be destroyed, and we must bring back civility, dissent, the values that made this country absolutely unique. When right-wing people say America is exceptional, I say it can be, prove it, because it can be. We are a political miracle if we let it. Or not, we don't. Did you ever think of running for office? It's a step down. I'm going to switch. You guys look fantastic. Hi. Hi. Well, yeah. Who's going to win Best Picture? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I, I just don't know. What, it's whoever wins deserves it. I mean, yeah, what everyone, an amazing group. Everybody's great. Yeah. Everybody. Do you have a favorite as well? Or you know? I loved Colin. Uh, uh, Colin Firth was. Yeah. I mean, the King's Speech is. It's going to be hard to be. You, you, you can't make a better movie than that. I need a speech therapist to like, be able to say how much I loved him in that movie. Yeah, he's, he's, he's so brilliant. And then, and I'm pulling really hard for my buddy John Hawks and Winter's Bone. And uh, other than that, I mean, they, what a great year for the Oscars. Yeah, it's fantastic. What, wonderful movies. Tell my viewers about your current and future projects. Well, current projects are, well, I've, I've got a few movies that are kind of uh, in post right now. going to be released this year. And... Uh, our current big project is our, we're getting uh, married in July. Congratulations! So that's what that's our big production right now that we're working on. Wow! Congratulations! Yeah. Excellent. All wedding all the time right now. Excellent. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks so much. Thank okay, thank you. Thank you. Writing us and asking for something. So consider us and thank you for your talent. Thank okay. you. Hey, Mr. Rice, what is it about Steven Spielberg's films and his style that endures? Um, he's the only one of his generation, our generation, that has made more than one film in his life. Everyone else has made one film and then repeated it over and over again. Mm -hmm. And Steven has deliberately made every genre. And Mike Schindler's list being the ultimate example. Any any of them. Yeah. I mean any of them. Also, he loves the American middle class. Also, he well discovered, rediscovered the foreground. Yeah, you know, that's right, because I was thinking of the E.T. of how, how he filmed the adults at waist level, right? And as a, a kid from an only child, you know, from a single parent family, sure. that's what spoke to me. So, yeah, that's absolutely true. Hey, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you.